In this video, we're going to look at predicting acid-base reactions using the five-step method. You're going to need your Chemistry 30 data booklet with you throughout the video so you can follow along with the examples. The first step in the five-step method is to list all species present in your solution. Uh, when you're doing this, there are two things to keep in mind. One, you have to dissociate soluble ionic compounds. You can find the solubility of a compound by looking at the solubility chart. You will find this on page 6 of your Chemistry 30 data booklet. So just as a quick reminder on how this chart works, uh, anything that fits into this row, our top row is considered soluble. And so we're going to match up the ion in the column header with the ions in this row. So anything in the top row is soluble, anything in the bottom row is insoluble. Really important, you'll see that your group one ions are listed here and we see the word most. Anytime you have an ionic compound with sodium, potassium, or lithium, you're going to have a soluble ionic compound. So make sure you keep that in mind. We also are going to ionize strong acids. On pages 8 and 9 of your data booklet, you will find your acid base table. Uh, this table has your strong acids grouped at the top. So perchloric acid, hydroiodic acid, hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. When we ionize these 100%, we will have H3O plus present in our solution and whatever our anion is from these acids. So uh, for example, perchloric acid, A minus would be ClO4 minus. For sulfuric acid, it would be HSO4 minus. Our next step is to classify these species as acids, bases, or neutral. And it's important to remember that some species may be amphiprotic. So amphiprotic, just means that the species can behave as an acid or a base. You'll find amphiprotic species in both the acid and the base column of your ta acid base table on pages 8 and 9. Uh, when you're looking to classify something as an acid, you're looking for a donatable proton. When you're looking to classify something as a base, you're looking for either a lone pair of electrons to bond with the acid or a negative charge. The third step is determining our strongest acid and our strongest base. So our strongest acid will have the highest Ka. This is going to be near the top of the acid column on pages 8 and 9. Our strongest base will have the highest Kb value. This is going to be nearest to the bottom of the base column. Step four is going to be to react the strongest acid with the strongest base. So our acid will donate a proton to the base. In this reaction, we're going to form the conjugate base and conjugate acid. And our final step will determine the equilibrium position. So we are going to look at the acids in both the forward and the reverse reaction. And whichever acid is stronger will dictate which side of the reaction is favored. So we'll look at some examples of this now and walk through this five-step method. Our first example is uh, quite straightforward. We'll build up to harder examples as we go. So aqueous solutions of hydrofluoric acid and sodium cyanide are mixed. So our first step will be to list everything we have present in the reaction. So hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid, so we're going to keep it together. We won't ionize it. Uh, we also have sodium cyanide. Sodium cyanide is a uh, soluble ionic compound, so we're going to dissociate that into sodium and cyanide. And because these are all aqueous solutions, we're going to have water present as well. So those are the four species that are present in these solutions. So at the moment we combine them, uh, the reaction can occur between two of these four species. 
So now we're going to classify as acid or base. So with an acid, we're looking for a donatable hydrogen. We can also look in the acid column of page eight. So hydrofluoric acid is an acid right in the name there. We also see this donatable hydrogen. Water is also an acid. So one of the hydrogens of water is donatable. For bases, we have sodium cyanide, oh, sorry, just cyanide, and water as well. So cyanide has a negative charge. That's going to allow it to take a proton. Water has lone pairs on oxygen. That can take a proton. Sodium is nothing. That's because sodium is a spectator ion in nearly every reaction in which it's involved. So now that we've classified, we're going to look for our strongest acid and our strongest base. Our strongest acid is going to have the highest Ka value. So the Ka of hydrogen fluoride is stronger than the, H, the Ka of H2O. So our strongest acid is hydrogen fluoride. Our strongest base is cyanide. If you look on your table, cyanide is closer to the bottom of the base column, meaning it has a higher Kb value. Now that we know our strongest acid and our strongest base, we're going to react them. So our strongest acid, hydrofluoric acid, is going to react with our strongest base, cyanide. And hydrofluoric acid is going to donate a proton. So this acidic proton is going to be donated to cyanide. So we're going to form equilibrium. When Hydrofluoric acid loses a proton, it forms its conjugate base, fluoride. When cyanide gains a proton, it forms its conjugate acid, hydrocyanic acid. In this equilibrium, we have two conjugate acid-base pairs, hydrogen fluoride and fluoride, or hydrofluoric acid and fluoride, are a conjugate acid-base pair, cyanide and hydrocyanic acid are also an acid-base conjugate pair. So they differ by one hydrogen. Lastly, we're going to predict the location of our equilibrium. So we're going to look at our two acids. So our acids in this reaction are in the forward reaction, hydrofluoric acid. It's giving up its proton to the cyanide. Our acid in the reverse reaction is hydrocyanic acid because in the reverse reaction, it's giving up its proton to fluoride. So we're going to look at the uh, Ka values for both of these acids. So looking at our uh, data table on pages 8 and 9, we can find hydrofluoric acid and see that the Ka of hydrofluoric acid is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 4. We can find the Ka of hydrocyanic acid and see that it is 6.2 times 10 to the negative 10. Because the Ka of hydrofluoric acid is larger than the Ka of hydrocyanic acid, we know that, K, the, that hydrofluoric acid is the stronger acid. And so that means that our forward reaction will be favored here. Meaning that at equilibrium, we will have mainly products. So our equilibrium is product favored. And we typically say that that means greater than 50% reaction. In our second example, we're going to look at the primary reaction when aqueous solutions of hydrogen nitrite and sodium hydrogen carbonate are mixed. So again, we're gonna start by listing the species that we have present. So from our hydrogen nitrite solution, this is a weak acid, so we're going to have hydrogen nitrate or nitrous acid. And we will have water. This will be common to both of our solutions. Uh, from our sodium hydrogen carbonate solution, that is a soluble ionic compound, so we will have sodium. And hydrogen carbonate is a polyatomic ion, so it will stay together. And again, water, but we've already listed that. So now we can classify as acids or bases. So again, acids, we're looking for a donatable hydrogen. Uh, we have three acids present. We have nitrous acid, we have water, as always, and we have hydrogen carbonate. 
For bases, we're looking for that lone pair and or negative charge. We have two bases present. We have water, as always, and we have hydrogen carbonate. Both water and hydrogen carbonate are amphiprotic species. This means that they are capable of acting as both a, an acid and a base. Now we can determine what our strongest acid and our strongest base are. Our strongest acid um, is going to be nitrous acid. It's closest to the top of the acid column. Our strongest base is hydrogen carbonate. It's closest to the bottom of the base column. So we're going to react these two species together. In our reaction, we will have hydrogen nitrite or nitrous acid and hydrogen carbonate. And our acid, nitrous acid, will donate a hydrogen to form its conjugate base, nitrite. And our base, hydrogen carbonate, will accept a proton to form its conjugate acid, carbonic acid. So again, we have two conjugate acid-base pairs here. We have nitrous acid and nitrite, and we have carbonic acid, sorry, hydrogen carbonate and carbonic acid. So the last thing we're going to do is compare the strength of our two acids. Uh, nitrous acid has a pK or sorry a Ka of 5.6 times 10 to the negative 4. Carbonic acid has a Ka of 4.7 times 10 to the negative 11. Now, even though hydrogen carbonate is also an acid, it's not acting as an acid in this reaction. In neither the forward nor the reverse reaction is it donating a proton. So we only care about the acid acting as an acid in the forward reaction and the acid acting as an acid in the reverse reaction. So in this comparison, we can say that the Ka of nitrous acid is greater than the Ka of carbonic acid, which means that nitrous acid is stronger. This tells us that the forward reaction is favored, which means that this reaction will have a product favored equilibrium position. In our final example, we're going to predict the reaction that occurs when aqueous solutions of sodium hydrogen sulfite and sodium dihydrogen phosphate are mixed. Once again, we'll start by listing everything we have present in our solutions. So in sodium hydrogen sulfite, we'll have sodium ions. Uh, we will have hydrogen sulfite ions. And we will have water. In sodium dihydrogen phosphate, we will have sodium and water, which we already have listed, and then we'll have dihydrogen phosphate, which is H2PO4 minus. We can classify these now. So sodium is a spectator ion. It's not going to be involved in the reaction. Hydrogen sulfite is an acid. Water is an acid. Dihydrogen phosphate is an acid. Hydrogen sulfite is also a base, water is also a base, and hydrogen pho dihydrogen phosphate is also a base. So all three species are amphiprotic. We can look on pages 8 and 9 to determine uh, which acid and which base are the strongest. So edging out slightly, um, we have hydrogen sulfite as our strongest acid, and dihydrogen phosphate as our strongest base. Make sure for an amphiprotic species you're looking in the correct column. So we're looking for the acid in the acid column and the base in the base column. So now we can write our reaction. So we're going to have hydrogen sulfite react with dihydrogen phosphate. Hydrogen sulfite is our acid, so it's going to donate a proton and form its conjugate base which is sulfite. Dihydrogen phosphate is a base, so it's going to accept a proton and form its conjugate acid, which is phosphoric acid. 
So now we can uh, determine which of or which side of our reaction is going to be favored, products or reactants. The Ka of uh, hydrogen sulfite is 6.3 times 10 to the negative 8. The Ka of phosphoric acid is 6.9 times 10 to the negative 3. So the Ka of our forward reaction acid, hydrogen sulfite, is less than the Ka of our reverse reaction acid, phosphoric acid. This means that the reverse reaction is favored, which means that our reaction will have a reactant favored equilibrium. and the represent reaction will be less than 